Hey, you got a quest? Charles, is that you? Oh, hey man, nice headset. <laughs> Thanks, just came in yesterday and I'm already obsessed with the thing. I bet, looks like a lot of fun. What are you playing? Oh, nothing. Actually, I'm working on my first Unity VR project. Do you already have some code on that thing? It's impressive. Thanks, it's just a little first person shooter project. You wanna try it out? Of course. Wow, this is great. It runs so smoothly. Thanks. It was actually really easy to get set up and started. In fact, the only real problem I'm having now is with my code. You're having trouble with the code? Yeah, I mean, it works, but honestly, I was so excited to get this thing working that I crammed all of the code into a single class file. It's turning into one of those, um, ah, shoot, what do you call it when a class gets too long? A uh, monolithic class. That's the one. Everything you just played was delivered by a single monolithic class file. I mean, I want to refactor it, but honestly, I don't know where to begin. Well, if you have a minute, I'd be happy to sit with you and take a look. Let me just grab a chair. That would be amazing. I'd really appreciate that. No problem, man. Always happy to help. What do we got? Here, check it out. All of the code lives in a class called Game Controller. That's the monolithic class. Hmm, it's actually pretty short for a monolith, but I see what you're saying. It has a lot of different responsibilities at the moment. Sure does. It handles player input, shooting, and updating the interface. I just don't know how to split it all up. Yeah, it takes some practice to know where to start, but uh, don't worry, man, we'll get through it together. In fact, why don't we make a game plan? First, we'll identify each one of your game controller's responsibilities. Then we'll extract those responsibilities into separate methods. When we're done with that, we'll break those methods off into their own respective classes. Finally, we use those classes to help us define your system's boundaries. Wait, system boundaries? I don't think I've heard that one before. Right. A system boundary is a conceptual line that divides your code into separate systems. It's important to think of your project in those terms because it helps you avoid problems like your monolithic class. Hmm. Okay. Don't worry, man. I'll show you an example. But first, let's refactor your code. Let's begin by using comments to call out the game controller's responsibilities. Looks like all of the action happens in the update method, so we'll start there. That makes sense. I can already tell you that line 20 is responsible for handling player input. Perfect, let's add a comment. Also, line 28 calls a coroutine that vibrates the controller. Does that fall under input too? I'd say so, nice. Um, next we have lines 22 through 26. That's the shooting logic, okay and line 28 is the UI. Perfect, now we can break these out into methods. Let's start by extracting the conditional logic on line 20 into a method called getTriggerDown. Then lines 23 through 27 into a method called fire. Next, line 26. Now, it's important to isolate these responsibilities as much as possible. So first, let's introduce a local variable to hold the value of ammo, so it'll be passed into the method that we extract, which we'll call update ammo label. Of course, that helped with the extraction, but now we can just inline ammo and call this function on line 15 as well. Beautiful. Finally, we'll finish up by extracting line 30 into a method called vibrate controller. Next, starting with input, let's create a new mono behavior called input handler in a folder called input. Then we can copy over our input methods. Add a serialized input handler field to game controller. And update all of our input logic method calls.
Finally, we'll delete all of this unused code. And rinse and repeat the process for shooting and the interface. Sound good? Yeah, in fact, can I try next? All right, so first I'm gonna need a mono behavior for this shooting logic. I think I'll call it gun, makes sense? Yep, don't forget to put that into a folder called shooting. That'll be important later. Right, okay. So next I'll copy the fire and bullet lifecycle coroutine methods and paste them into my new gun class. Uh oh, yeah, it looks like you need to migrate some fields as well. Oh, okay, that should be easy enough. Great, and just a heads up, I can already see that you're gonna need to expose the ammo field. Yeah, you're right. I'll go ahead and use a public getter property for that. Nice. All right, next I need to add a serialized gun field to game controller. Add calls to ammo and fire. And finally, remove this unused code. You're really getting the hang of this. I am, aren't I? I'll even knock out this last one real quick. So again, first, create a new class. We'll call it ammo label and put it in the UI folder. Copy the method and field over it. Add a serialized field to game controller. Make the appropriate calls. And lastly, remove the unused code. And I'm gonna clean up these comments and tighten up the code. Wow, this looks so much better. Thanks again for your help, man. Hey, no problem, but we aren't done yet. Oh yeah, system boundaries, right? Bingo. We've already defined some soft boundaries by separating the code into individual classes based on responsibility and by placing each of those classes into a feature or system folder. But we can take this a step further and solidify those boundaries using namespaces. So let's surround each class with a namespace that corresponds to the name of its folder. So now that our classes have namespaces, have a look at the first few lines of game controller. We can see here that it now has a using statement for each system that it references in its code, which indicates that the game controller is acting as an intermediary between them. I think I get it. We're using namespaces as a sort of wall to define the systems that each class belongs to, right? Exactly. Hmm, that's pretty cool. But now I'm wondering, how do you cross those boundaries once you define them? Like, what if the input system had to trigger a change in the UI? I'm glad you asked. There's actually a couple of techniques that I'd like to cover with you, but unfortunately, I actually have to step away for a meeting. So why don't you commit this code and then we can talk about it tomorrow. Does that work? That'd be great. It'll give me time to look at some other code and practice finding and setting up new boundaries. That's a good idea. All right, man, I'll catch you later. All right, later, man. Special shout out to my top supporters. Breakfast 3D, Dark Rush Photography, R-Star, Thomas, and Trond.